Okay, uh, I'm John Wirtz with Vermont County Tea Party. We're here with Ron Hill. He is running with for the uh, one of the commissioners' uh, position with the Texas Railroad Commission. And um, uh, as we discussed before, Ron, go ahead and let you open up uh, for up to five minutes, and then we'll do the Q and A session after that. I'm Ron Hale. I'm running for the Texas Railroad Commission. Uh, I've spent the last 18 years working for a private security firm. I'm the licensed engineer at the firm. Uh, we do anti-terrorism assessments for the oil and gas industry, uh, and we work with other aspects of the Texas energy industry. Uh, my main reason for running, um, over the past year we've lost about 50% of our business, and a lot of it has been because of outside influences on the Railroad Commission and outside influences from outside of the United States influencing the market, uh, mainly OPEC. Uh, OPEC has actually taken a downturn in the last two weeks, uh, which is really great. It's starting to kind of fall apart under the leadership that it has. A lot of the countries are wanting to back out and basically say every man for themselves. So that's, that's a good thing. Uh, that was one of my main fighting points was that the U.S. needed to lift the, the ban on oil exports. Um, we need to uh, fight the EPA in Texas uh, and the BLM who keep trying to come in and take our fresh water from us. Um, but it's kind of a buzzword when you think about the Railroad Commission because it really has no say in what the EPA does. Um, it could influence and write opinions and send it to the Attorney General to sue on the behalf of all Texans uh, to, to get rid of the rules that they've come up with, like WOTUS. Um, what is WOTUS? Uh, the water is the United States. Um, it is a ruling that the EPA made in, in the last year or so. Uh, with, six or seven other rules that they've uh, tried to impose on the energy industry in the United States. Um, when I look at the Railroad Commission, I want to see more of a technical background and a Railroad Commissioner, somebody who understands the Railroad Commission and what it does, how it creates the rules and regulations to make sure that uh, energy is produced safely inside of the state of Texas. So. With that being said, you have to look at all the candidates, see who is the most experienced, see who actually has a background of working in the industry before you make a decision. I would call for you to take a look at my website, ronhalefortexas.com, to learn a little bit more about myself. I think I'm the only candidate that is actually pulling in industry endorsements uh, from working in the industry. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. The, uh, just a little clarification on um, education. You said you had some college and online tech school, and uh, I, I see down here number five that you're a licensed professional engineer. Yes. Uh, is that in regards to the security industry, yes. or you're a licensed PE? Yeah, uh, it's licensed. Registered PE. Uh, the <clears throat> private security industry, uh, whether it's the fire alarms and security, actually was moved out from under uh, the registry, the Texas Registry of Professional Engineers. Uh, they wrote a ruling back in 1994 that the State Fire Marshal's Office and the Private Security Bureau actually regulate our engineering licenses. Uh, you can go to college, you can get a degree and be a professional engineer for fire alarm systems or security systems, but now you don't have to. The state of Texas actually has courses that uh, companies and, I guess, suppliers will go and they would get uh, educational licenses to train individuals in the field. Um, that is what I've done and I became a professional engineer from that aspect for the security industry. Uh, but we work with uh, refineries, we work with the corporate offices, with drill sites, uh, logistics companies on designing security systems uh, that they use, and that's the type of engineering I do. Okay, okay, good deal, thank you. <clears throat> we have an issue with property rights and um, the, the needs for national security and the need for the, the transportation of oil. Um, the pipeline is, uh, is a prime example, um, the, being blocked by our um, president mm -hmm. um, and the problems that we have with OSHA and EPA 
um, in the oil industry and with with the pipelines going through as well. Um, what can you do or would you be willing to do as railroad commissioner to, to be able to fix this? Um, the number one thing is is being able to educate the public properly. You know, the Railroad Commission needs to uh, lead by example towards other regulatory boards throughout the country and towards uh, congressional leaders and our senators and uh, in the country because you know they depend on lobbyists to tell them which way they should vote, what what specifics they need to take a look at. And as a railroad commissioner in Texas, you know. Uh, first things first is we have to protect property rights. If somebody doesn't want to sell their land, you know, the, it shouldn't be eminent domain and have the government take their land away from them just to put in a pipeline. Uh, on the other hand, pipelines transporting uh, crude oil, uh, natural gas, it's a lot safer than storing it in containers, putting it on tanker trucks and, you know, driving it to a facility or putting it in barrels and driving it to a facility. So. From a safety standpoint, the pipelines are a lot safer. Uh, there's less likely for a disaster to happen. Uh, most of the companies monitor their pipelines to an extravagant, that's where most of their cost is if they're a pipeline company. Um, so as a railroad commissioner, it's going to be about you know educating the public properly on the pipelines. Now, from, I want to say in September when the articles broke on uh, David Porter being in bed uh, with an Enbridge lobbyist who actually wrote a letter to the FCC to get some cellular technology taken away from a company who is in bankruptcy protection. We started digging into Enbridge. Um, everybody thinks that the Keystone Pipeline failed because the president wanted it to fail. Enbridge actually got one of their pipelines from the tar sands, uh, presidential approval without any of the environmental studies or anything to increase the size of their petroleum pipeline. And guess which great state it goes to? Illinois. It goes to uh, Sitco and Marathon Oils refineries. So it's more of you know having a railroad commissioner who understands how to look at things from outside the box. You know you're going to have candidates who say, well. Oh, I can do this or I can do that, but if they're not looking outside the box, because there's got to be a reason why federal government doesn't want a pipeline to come down to Texas, and that's because Texas is a red state, they know it, and if those red dollars are down here, we're going to be able to spread those red dollars to the rest of the country, and it influences elections. Um, so, you know, being able to look at the bigger picture. It's not just about Texas. The oil industry, yes, it's 37% of our economy, but it's it's bigger than Texas. And, you know, you need a railroad commissioner who's going to understand what that means. Also helped uh, Warren Buffett's uh, railroad system. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Another well, related. Yeah. Ken. Um, <clears throat> I guess following on with the pipeline issue a little bit more, I, I would agree that certainly it's one of the safest modes of transport um, until you introduce a potential for terrorism. Yes. So how do you protect pipelines, thousands of miles of pipelines against terrorists that could blow them up one section and create a false When the companies go in and they design those pipeline systems, you know, they're you know, we need to be able to regulate them to where they need to have cutoff points, where they need to have cutoff valves, how fast of a cellular-like type of technology for reporting when something does happen to be able to remotely shut a valve so that way, you know, they're not continually pumping into an area. You know, we don't want something like what happened with Deepwater Horizon where, you know, it blew and just kept pouring, 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 and there was no way to, you know, shut it off or cap it. So, you know, we partnering with, you know, the colleges and the universities that the Railroad Commission already has partnerships with, you know, trying to find innovative technologies, working with them, having contests to, you know, counteract what is going on in the industry is a, is a great outlook. Another outlook is, is that, you know, most oil and gas companies that do have pipelines, they hire consultants like me, and we go out and we do worst case scenario and tell them where they need to, you know, have types of technology put in valves because if they've got a 300 mile pipeline that they have running from one place to a refinery and there's only every 100 miles a cutoff, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of barrels of oil that could come out 
it. So they need to, we need to better section off where they actually have the pipelines run. And that's through, you know, influencing the industry to create new standards and new rules, uh, but not in a way that would hamper them from wanting to do business, but it better protect them. Are they, are they doing that on anywhere on their own initiatives? Um, yes. But, you know, what, what percent? I mean, is it, is it all nationwide or is it Texas, do you know? Or? I know that all the new pipelines that are being put put in, I think it's, it's somewhere between 2.5 miles to 5 miles where they're starting to put in those those breakers where they actually have, where they can turn off the valve mm -hmm. to actually stop pumping through the section, and, you know, because they, they're doing it now for repairs, and it's not necessarily geared towards what's going to happen if a terrorist attacks. It's more, hey, we need, if we need to repair some part in the section, you know, we don't want to Shut down the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. How long does it take to close one of those valves? Uh, you know, it depends on how fast they get a signal. You know, it can take anywhere from, you know, 10, 20 seconds to maybe five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. You know, just depending on the technology that they have. Okay. This is Dale Fessenden, Ron Hill. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Um, I noticed in your flyer here, yes, that um, it says uh, energy independence um, in, in the next five years. Yes. I think is what it, it claims yeah. here. How, is that possible? It is possible if Congress and you know a lot of the refineries in the United States would want to do. They want to do business with. Areas where they can get the petroleum and the natural gas they need, but they, in, a, in a safe manner. You know, the, they don't want to go to unstable regions. To, but the fact that the United States has had an oil embargo for the last 40 years, it's they're kind of a lot of other countries are forced to buy from unstable countries. So it's it's more about you know, and I'm hoping. I, I hate to say it, but you know, if he signs the omnibus, that it's. it's the oil export is over, right? and they'll be able to export the oil. So we might actually see an uptick in, you know, sales from the United States going to other countries, and you might actually start seeing a global shift from <coughs> buying Middle East and South American uh, oil. Okay. Um, let me backtrack a minute. I know we just kind of jump right in the middle of, of several questions. Um, explain to us what the Texas Railroad Commission. Is tasked with uh, what's its function? Uh, the main function is uh, to educate and protect the public, and then the next is to regulate uh, oil and gas operations, pipeline safety in Texas, uh, coal and uh, uranium uh, reclamation. Um, and a lot of people aren't aware, but in South Texas there is a huge uranium mine. They just found 126 million pounds of uranium. So. Um, the Railroad Commission it really needs to efficiently regulate those aspects of the energy industry in Texas. Um, Title 16 it outlines everything that the Railroad Commission does in its scope. Um, there is a Part 2 to Title 16, which is the Public Utilities Commission. And I know a lot of people have said in recent years, and I even thought it was a good idea that the pipeline safety uh, would go towards the Public Utilities Commission. But after an experience I had with a public utility worker on Friday, I'm thinking the Public Utility Commission needs to uh, come under the Railroad Commission fully. Um, having three unelected board members who are allowing uh, the public utilities workers to have unabashedful access to our properties and are allowed to call the police on us and say we're making terroristic threats when our dog tries to attack them for coming in our yard, it kind of, uh, it's unsettling. Um, yeah, I had an experience Friday. Okay. <laughs> Smart meter? Uh, no, uh, we have a transformer in the backyard and uh, I was taking a nap and I guess he was beating on the door and I didn't answer the door. so. Uh, my wife came and woke me up, said that there's somebody trying to break in the front door, so I called the sheriffs. Turned out the guy was a utility worker, and they asked him to leave. Two hours later, he came back with another sheriff, and the sheriff tried to arrest me for being, making terroristic threats because my dog tried to attack him. 
And I kind of laughed at him and was like, here, here's the police report. The other cop asked him to leave the property. I mean, I can't do anything. <laughs> oh, welcome to Obama world. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, it's been since the 70s since we opened up any refineries in Texas. Part of the problem is federal government and their oversight and their thumbs on the oil industry, but in the last eight years, specifically Texas, because of what's taking place in our White House. Um, a lot of things have changed in technology. A lot of things can be fixed that were problems before. And in the refineries where they're safer, they're working better, they're environmentally friendly. Um, it hasn't been done because it's not it's not cost effective for um, the, the companies, and they don't want to have to fight all the stuff from the federal government. Yeah. So, what can we do to nullify, or what do you see your position as railroad commissioner to try to nullify some of this um, government intervention and in, in business? I think. Uh, you know, building relationships with the congressmen throughout the state and, you know, the senators, being able to have them uh, introduce legislation at the national level to, you know, learn from what Texas is doing with our pro-growth towards the oil and gas industry, letting them know that, hey, we need more refineries so that we can keep up with the amount of petroleum that we are, you know, producing in our state to be able to, you know, create uh, cheaper energy. Uh, for our state and for our neighbors. Um, so a lot of it is going to be you know, writing opinions to the congressmen to try to get them on board with trying to influence the Energy Commission at the national level. Um, at the state level, uh, you know, it's, it's about you know, creating regulations that investors see as a good investment to potentially loan out the money to a uh, one of the refineries, or if it's a new uh, new group of engineers that decided that they want to go into, you know, owning their own refinery, you know, it's it's about creating that that great environment that they feel safe with attempting to open a refinery because it's going to have to be an investment dollars and something like that is going to have to be close to a billion dollars just to build one, and so telling investors, hey, you know, it's it's going to be profitable, but we're seeing oil kind of, I mean, just take a torpedo in price right now. It's, it's more of, you know, creating the regulations that they think it's a safe environment to invest. All right. Um, one of your questions or one of your responses, you said uh, the RRC is stuck in the ancient past technology-wise. Um, can you expand on that? 1996 cobalt computers or 1998, <laughs> I mean, just... You know, when when you look at uh, the tech firms that are just, I mean, just exploding everywhere through Silicon Valley, up in Dallas and around Austin, you, you, you see that, you know, they can go and buy technology off the shelf. They've got programmers that can create new technology. Uh, we have partnerships with the, mostly universities in the state of Texas, the Railroad Commission, you know, where you've got kids that are creating apps that could make the Railroad Commission run more efficiently, whether it's the permitting process, the uh, reimbursement process through capping a uh, well, you know, it, it need, we need to bring more technology into the Railroad Commission in order for, to keep up with the pace of, that the industry is growing. Um, microfiche machines and cobalt servers are, they're so outdated that I, I honestly don't know any cobalt com programmers anymore. <laughs> oh, you're for more transfer. I think most of them have retired completely. And, <laughs> and the machines have been buried. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, just like the Ataris. <laughs> okay. Um, the <clears throat> in question number eight, um, it, the question is, what is the most important problem you see for the Railroad Commission in the next legislative session? You had indicated getting 
approved by Sunset Commission. Yes. Um, Reapproved, I'm sorry. And I would solve it by first getting the name change for the Railroad Commission so people will understand that. Yes. How, how is that going to solve uh, problems just well, in the name change? Well, most of the legislators and the, you know, the public that actually sits on the Sunset Commission, uh, they're not they're not particularly industry people. They you know are legislators or everything from dentists, doctors, uh, insurance salesmen, uh, real estate agents. Uh, you know they don't necessarily understand when you have to make a joke that it's hey we don't have anything to do with the railroads anymore. No more choo choo trains. It kind of throws them off because they don't understand why. It would be named the Railroad Commission if it has nothing to do with it. So that automatically turns them off to why we need a regulatory board that's elected uh, to regulate the industry. So changing it to whether it's you know the Natural Resource Commission, the Energy and Natural Resource Commission, or whatever name choice is, is made, it would they would have a better understanding of what's coming in front of them. They would understand that it's 37 percent of the of Texas's economy. It, it, it's, a, it's a big uh, uh, supplier of funds for public schools, $4 billion last year. It, you know, it's, it's more than just, you know, hey, we're, we're, we're the joke office, we used to deal with trains, but I mean, haven't had any regulatory authority for trains since 1984, and in 2007, they actually finally took the language out of Title 16. So a name change is the first step, and then the second step is having commissioners who have worked in the industry understand the industry, understand what regulations are good, you know, uh, why we need Sunset's authority over approving us, and moving forward from there to give, uh, to give their opinions to other legislators when we come and we bring rule changes and we bring you know, parts of the uh, Title 16 that we need changed. So, it's, the name change has to happen, and it, it, it's time. I, I, I love history, I'm a history buff, you know, I love the history of Texas, everything from the Alamo to the Astrodome to, you know, Spindle Top and the first oil strike in the state, you know, it's, the history is rich in our state, but, you know, having an office that is named completely something totally separate from what it does just throws everybody off and it, it starts that well we don't need it if you don't do that mm -hmm. so. okay. All right. you said the 64 dollar word you never <coughs> heard groucho marx um, <laughs> regulation obviously that's very key at, at all levels uh, federal state local and so forth uh, can you cite some regulations that you think need to be beefed up from the Railroad Commission or ones that need to be done away with, some that need to be transformed? Yeah, I think uh, the number one that needs to be go away is uh, the alternate fuels. Uh, I guess it's, I'm, I'm going to call it the piggy bank. Uh, basically every time an uh, LNG fill station is built in the state of Texas, uh, they can receive anywhere up to $660,000 to build the station. Uh, a lot of the fill stations have been built uh, in and around San Antonio and Bear County because the, I guess, city council and the mayor decided that, you know, they're going to go alternate fuel because of the, what gas prices were. So they had a couple of stations around the city and for their city workers, and it just created this snowball effect for the region. Um, I don't think the Railroad Commission, since we're supposed to be regulating an industry, should be handing out winners and losers and investment to companies to go into business. Uh, most of those fill stations have zero employees. You know, there's a guy that goes out and fills the station, there's a guy that goes out and tests it, but there is no worker on site. Um, so that's one that I think needs to go away. Um, we were talking earlier about the pipelines and you know, communication uh, regulation. Uh, you know, I would like to see that, you know, when, when a home alarm goes off, there's a regulation that there has to be a response from a monitoring center of no more than 60 seconds. 
so I would like to see you know, when the pipeline companies are reporting a problem uh, between their reporting and the shutting off of a valve before uh, a problem happens, that time shrunk down to as fast as possible. Um, the I would say the orphan wells, the reimbursement process, uh, I guess the legislation that goes along with it, um, when a I guess a landowner has a well uh, drill on their property, they have to go back in and they have to get an approved concrete company, an engineer, to sign off on plans and every step for when they actually plug a well. And then they have to pay up front and then they submit all the paperwork to the Railroad Commission and they get reimbursed. Now, before they drill the well, they have to supply $57,000 to you know, the Railroad Commission uh, for the, P, I think it's P5 insurance, which is basically if the well is ever abandoned or, or, or needs to be plugged, that money is there to do it uh, for the Railroad Commission. Now there's over 2,000 plus orphan wells in the state of Texas where there's a problem of having to deal with tracking down the company that's operating the well, tracking down the landowner that you know, the well's property is on before the Railroad Commission can go in and just plug the well itself. Um, I would like to see that process improved. It's, it's kind of disheartening to say that there's over 2,000 wells that we just don't know. We know that there's a well drilled there and we just don't know if it's being operated, if it's been abandoned, if it's uh, turned off for the time being. You know, there's no recourse for the company who did the well and the landowner. It's just, you know, up to the Railroad Commission to try to find those people. So, you know, that needs to, there needs to be better communication between all owners and operators in the state with the Railroad Commission to make it more efficient so that if a natural disaster does happen in the area, and that well is actually sitting there spurting out oil or spurting out natural gas and a brush fire comes through at the same time, you know, you're talking about a real disaster. So there needs to be a change in that uh, regulation. Okay. All right. Um, in one of your answers, you talked about uh, asking about benefits for same-sex partners. You said no, but you wanted plus one benefits. Yes. Try to understand the difference there. Uh, plus one benefits. Uh, when I ran for a state senate, I come across, uh, it was a group that they, they were lobbying for plus one benefits, not for same sex, but for plus one, because there are some single parents who have uh, disabled children that live with them, but once they reach the age of 25, you know, they're no long, they have to have their own insurance, so they're not allowed to keep them on their own insurance policy. So looking at plus one benefits was a way for them to be able to keep that child on the insurance. I was thinking I had read some things in relation to that, that uh, that 25, age 25 exemption uh, does not apply if a child is classified as disabled. Uh, and it depends on the insurance company to if they, you know, if they allow that as part of their, because every state has a different ruling towards it and a lot of the companies in Texas don't necessarily buy insurance from an insurance company in Texas. They were buying from states like California or Arizona or even uh, uh, Delaware. Uh, to get insurance that way, and they had different rules to the types of, you know, the age of the child. Some of the companies in California allowed up to the age of 30. So, <laughs> it was, you know, it, it, it all depends on the state, and I, I just think that the plus one would be, you know, might benefit people, and it might cause some of the people who like to cause problems over benefits to calm down a little bit and realize life is more than just arguing with people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, question 16. Civil, civic, sorry, political union organization and individuals to whom you've contributed the last five years. Uh, what, what is HYR? Uh, Houston Young Republicans. Oh, okay. King Street. Uh, downtown Houston Pachyderm and Greater Houston Pachyderm. Isn't that lawyers? 
Pachyderm? No, that's uh, Pachyderm oh, Republicans. Oh. Republicans. Is that what they are? Yeah. Pachyderms. Pachyderms. We're the elephant. 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 Pachyderms. They're what? It's a term for elephant. Oh. <laughs> Come on, get your zoo on with you, man. You think that I wasn't a Republican or something? Um, so, okay. Um, where was I? <laughs> Let's see. Okay, um, how, number 10. How would you balance the use of existing energy sources with the development of alternate? energy sources and you said you would balance everything equally uh, because we should not play favorites with the industries but if if you're balancing or is that a control statement uh, if you're balancing everything equally uh -huh. uh, you said I would balance everything equally it sounds like a c control statement like I balance everything across the board yeah basically you know when you because uh, the commissioners have tried to bring uh, solar and wind under the control of the Railroad Commission uh, in the last couple of years. So being able to regulate everything from a neutral standpoint and not taking favorites with what should receive benefits from the state, um, you know, I think that subsidies and handouts just all around need to end. I mean, if a company wants to go into business, you know, find some private dollars to invest in your company, you shouldn't depend on tax dollars. So you're saying let the free market dictate? Yes. Okay. 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 Please stop me early if you've already covered everything for question number seven. <clears throat> it says you're the only engineer in the race. Um, yeah, I think when I answered the question, I was the only engineer in the race. <laughs> okay, well, so I was, miles with the there's, uh, I guess there is a, I guess, Weston Martinez is a uh, cellular engineer. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Okay, but I guess my question was more in particular to uh, to Ryan Sitton. Yes. And um, he's a mechanical engineer. Yeah. Well, oil and gas. Yeah. Do, can, is it possible to get too engineer heavy on the railroad commission? I don't think so. I think. Uh, because a lot of the rules and regulations have to deal with engineering aspects. Um, so if you took a, let's just say an art teacher, and you put her put it together with an engineer, and you ask them to solve the problem of, uh, you know, the types of uh, structural problems that might occur with a certain type of pipe. Uh, that is being used in order to lay a pipeline. Um, the art teacher will be able to draw the pipe, she'll be able to measure the pipe, but the mathematics involved with the pressure and types of that nature that will go through the pipe uh, would be better understood by the engineer. Um, and a lot of the rules and regulations that are created are more, they're more engineer based um, towards the industry. So I think that uh, you know when it comes to making sure that the railroad commission is running efficiently and gets to the permits fast enough and understands that when one of the 